from here, Asia, and uh, uh, those uh, in other countries, maybe morning. Yeah, so we want to welcome. I want to thank uh, Pastor Charlie for inviting me uh, to this uh, group uh, and also give me the opportunity to share tonight. Yeah, so. Ya, saya bersyukur kepada Tuhan karena uh, peluang untuk berkongsi malam inilah. Ya, yeah. uh, I am a, a Filipino. I, what I do tonight, I will share my uh, life journey uh, until I serve the Lord, uh, and also want to share to encourage encourage you all uh, through my journey. Ya, yeah. so, saya mau mendorong malam ini dengan perjalanan hidup saya sehingga melayani Tuhan. Uh, we want to read. In Mark chapter 3, from verse 14 and 15. Ya, Markus 3, ayat 14 dan 15. Ya, kalau ada Alkitab, boleh baca. Ya, Markus 3, 14, 15. So, in Mark chapter 3, verse 14 and 15, um, in serving the Lord and also walking with God, I see a pattern here which uh, really uh, fits my life journey. So, I want to share from this scripture. Uh, maybe we read from verse 13, uh, 13, 14, 15, yeah? dari ayat 13, 14, 15, Markus 3. Uh, verse 13, and he goes up into a mountain and calls unto him whom he would. And they came unto him. And he ordained 12 that they should be with him and that he might send them forth to preach and to have power to heal sicknesses and to cast out devils. Ya, kalau kita baca itu dal uh, dalam bahasa Indonesia, so kita melihat ada satu pola ya, uh, yang uh, di mana kehidupan saya juga berjalan di dalam pola inilah, dalam pattern ini. So, I grew up, uh, I'm a Filipino, uh, but I was born in uh, East Malaysia, in Sabah. Yeah, uh, what happened was during the time the uh, uh, there was a timber company <clears throat> who recruited a lot of Filipinos from the Philippines to work in the uh, timber company in uh, East Malaysia. So that is where my father uh, came in with those uh, uh, workers uh, recruit. Yeah, so we uh, we are the uh, second generation from that uh, group. Yeah. Ya, saya seorang Filipin, uh, tapi lahir di Staba. Oleh karena di, uh, ada satu uh, perusahaan uh, kayu balak di Staba, ya banyak yang diambil dari Filipin. So, uh, of course, Filipino uh, they are very staunch in uh, Catholicism. So, I was born uh, a Catholic um, and I grew up there in the church. Uh, in the Catholic community, very strong uh, Catholic community uh, in that timber uh, timber settlement, yeah, timber camp. Um, so I studied there. Uh, I grew up in uh, Sabah, uh, East Malaysia, <clears throat> uh, but never go to church, even as a Catholic boy, uh, never go to church until I was 16 years old, yeah. Walaupun saya membesar sebagai uh, orang Katolik di tempat itu, tapi tidak pernah ke gereja sehingga saya umur 16 tahun. So, when I was 16, uh, I was uh, inspired and encouraged by my grandmother. Yeah, grandmother. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> my, my grandmother always pray the, you know, the rosary in the, the Catholic Church, the prayer beads. So, always pray every night and also she read the bible she read the bible uh, early mornings and before bed she will read that in her room so i was very curious to see and she always go to church and all and on top of that my auntie will play the uh, hymns uh, the, the the hymn songs uh, every early morning about four or five o'clock because I, i'll be getting up to prepare myself to go to school so she will own this music, and somehow these this, uh, hymns, these Christian songs, really, you know, touches my heart. And seeing my grandmother uh, praying and uh, reading her Bible, of course, in the Catholic way. 
So because of that, that inspired me to go to church uh, in the Catholic Church. So my first uh, time to church, uh, I was 16 years old. I was 16 years old. Yeah. So ya yeah, saya membesar melihat uh, uh, nenek uh, nenek saya ya yeah? uh, oma kan oma dalam bahasa Indonesia uh, melihat dia berdoa baca firman Tuhan ya yeah, itu mendorong saya untuk pergi gereja karena saya tidak pernah ke gereja sehingga lah umur 16 tahun uh, jadi itu pertama kali saya pergi gereja so growing the uh, going to the church first time uh, my first Christmas my first Christmas that is where uh, the Lord touches me. You know, I, I believe God works in a mysterious way, and I believe what I experienced that Christmas Eve. You know, Catholic Catholic people go to church in the Christmas Eve. They have this uh, uh, Christmas Eve uh, service, or they call it Mass. Uh, so I was there first time in my life, uh, Christmas Eve, uh, sitting right at the back of the church, back of the church. And when the when the uh, priest was speaking, I I felt something different, and I felt like uh, the words was very personal to me, telling about the story of Jesus, why Jesus came, and all of that. So that experience uh, really, you know, uh, started my life journey, my spiritual life. So from then onwards, when uh, the Lord began to work in my life, I start reading the Bible. You know, in the Catholic Church, uh, they don't allow you to read the Bible. So my grandmother will be scolding me when I read the Bible because she said we cannot read the Bible. But she read the Bible, you know. So I read the Bible quietly, secretly, and um, go to church and um, join the young people. I enjoy church. I enjoy church. We always go to church, of course, in the Catholic way. You know, until I finish my primary school, then my father's, uh, uh, my secondary school, uh, then my father sent me to uh, a private college in a bigger city in uh, Kota Kinabalu. So bigger city means uh, more exposure, you know, uh, more exposure and and uh, I was there uh, away from my home. So it means more liberty. I, I was uh, independent, you know? <laughs> so I can follow my friends, I can do what I want. But what happened when I was studying there in that bigger city, uh, because I already started my spiritual life, I love the church. So I continue going to church in the Catholic church. Um, regularly and uh, what happened during those time in the 90s early 90s uh, charismatic movement hit the catholic church uh, and they have this uh, charismatic gathering and all so i joined them and that that add more uh, excitement uh, in my spiritual life so i pursue this uh, you know, knowing the Lord, I pursue this love for God and I want to know him. You know, I really want to know God. So I pursue him and that exposed me to other churches. Uh, I followed some friends to go to other churches, uh, non-Catholic church, go for seminars when they have guest speakers come, you know, and um, I just love all those things. And during those times, we have this uh, uh, video uh, VHS, video cassettes, and all of that. So my friend, they bought a lot of uh, these videos of Benny Hinn, uh, Robert Slayden, Reinhard Bonke, you know. And I, I begin to love all this preaching. And I be sitting down in my friend's house. I, I be sitting down, uh, down the hours. They go to work and I'll be staying at their house and just whole day and be watching all this video. And that really impacted my life. And uh, read books. Um, while studying and working um, in, in that uh, city. Uh, so what happened, um, I begin to feel the call of God in my life. I, I have a desire to, to serve God. I have a desire to, to preach. Every time I see people preaching, I, I, I'm telling myself, I want to be like them. I want to be like them. You know, especially being exposed to all those videos uh, with the anointing, miracle crusades, and all, I, you know, it, it, it really excites me. I, I want to be like that. Uh, 
I want to pray for people, you know, get healed in all those uh, demonstration and manifestation. Uh, I just love it. And I begin to feel the call of God. When, when I went, uh, I finished my school, I worked with this uh, company. And uh, every time I work, when I, you know, I, I work as the architectural uh, drafting. So every time I draw the plan and all, I be seeing myself preaching. <laughs> Preaching, I cannot concentrate uh, working uh, until my senior uh, was not happy with me. But I feel that call very strongly. And um, uh, I said, I want to go to Bible school, but I don't have the money. Uh, I do not know how to go. Uh, I do not know where to start because I'm a Catholic. I don't know where to find all this. But uh, one day, my, my Catholic friend, my Catholic friend uh, told me, he said, I am going to this school uh, in Kuala Lumpur, you know, in Kuala Lumpur, in, in this another city. He said, I'm going to the Bible school. Uh, this is a six month uh, training school, six month training school called the School of X. School of X. So he, he showed me the brochure. And um, I said, Wow, this is like an answered prayer. You know, the Lord knows my heart. Um, so he said, okay, I, uh, we go together. I want you to go with me. I will buy you the plane ticket, all right? I, I, I sponsor the plane ticket, but the fees, you need to work it out yourself. Uh, during that time, I just started working. I don't have money because I have to pay my room rent and all that. that. I don't have saving and all. So I said, I want to go. I decided to go. I have the plane ticket. My friend says he buy for me plane ticket. So I said, okay, I can go now. So I just need uh, that money. Um, I need about 5,500 ringgit for that six months uh, expenses. So uh, that, that is a very big money for me. I tried to do it, uh, to do my own way. So I call some friends, I call my uncles and said, I need to borrow money and all of that. And everyone says, no, we don't have money. We cannot help you with this. <laughs> so I think that is, um, a training ground for me to trust the Lord, you see. So I was praying. So I prayed. And actually, we we supposed to fly uh, one, week, one week more. One week more. And I still don't have the money to pay for my fees. So I was praying. One night, I came out of my room. I sat on the, uh, on the staircase, sat down there, and I just prayed. I said, Lord, you... I need this money. I want to go to Bible school. I want to serve you. And I was praying there. And I do not know. I think, I believe I saw a vision. I saw a vision um, sitting in this branch. Uh, and then underneath is, is a, a flowing stream, flowing stream. So while I was watching that bird, I saw this dry leaf fell into that stream and just flow, and just flow. And I felt that the Lord was speaking to me. He said, did you see this little bird? This little bird, he does not need to work. No worries and all, but I feed this little bird. And if you can be just like that leaf, that dry leaf, you know, fall into the, the, the stream and just flow with this stream. And if you, if you can trust me, you know, just fall on my hands and just flow with me, I will provide for you. That is what I felt the Lord was spoke, uh, speaking to me that time. And you know what happened? That week, we have this singles prayer meeting in the, in the charismatic group, the singles prayer meeting. And in the singles prayer meeting, there is this two, uh, one couple, this one couple, and they heard about me that uh, I'm planning to go to this Bible school. And they just approached, they, they barely knew me, you know, we are not, that close friend uh, during the time we just met in that uh, uh, prayer meeting. And this couple came up to me and said, hey, our brother uh, told us that you're going with him to Bible school. And they told me, he said, we will sponsor you 3,500 ringgit. So almost more than half of the fee covered, okay? So I still need uh, another uh, 1,000 plus, you know, to, uh, complete the fee the weekend after that the weekend before we fly they came back to me and said the lord told us to top it up you know to complete your 
uh, 5,500 for your whole six months fee. So I really felt that the Lord called me and with all these confirmations, so I went to the Bible school and uh, six months there, uh, trained the Bible school and then came back. And since that time, after the Bible school, I went into full-time ministry answering God's call uh, until today. In this uh, scripture in Mark chapter 3, uh, from verse 13, I see a pattern uh, that Jesus called unto him in verse 13. Jesus calls unto him whom he would, and they came unto him. So he ordained 12 that they should be with him uh, and that he might send them forth to preach and to have power to heal sicknesses and to cast out devils. So I see three things here uh, as a pattern for walking with God and serving the Lord. Uh, of course, God called. The calling comes first. The calling comes first. But but I see in verse 14, number one, he said, um, he ordained this to he called this to uh, the, the The primary, the primary reason and purpose is to be with him, number one, is to be with him. So when you serve the Lord, this is what I experienced in my life why I want to be in the ministry, why I want to serve God, because I want to be with the Lord. I want to know him. I just want to know God, right? That is the reason why I give my life to serve God, uh, even into the full-time ministry. Uh, right at the young age, I was uh, in my uh, late 22 uh, years old. Uh, I gave up everything and uh, served the Lord full-time when I was 22. So to be with him, number one, just to be with the Lord, to spend time with him, to get to know him, to spend time with his word, you know, get to know him intimately in my life. And number two, he said that he might send them forth to preach. Uh, God will not send anybody without that person have a relationship with God. A, a person must know God. A person must re respond to the call of God. Then when you have this relationship with God, you will know God, then he will send you forth. He will send his servant forth. And in the sending, God will equip us. That's why he said to have power um, to heal sicknesses and to cast out devils. So the authority come, right? So the calling um, to be with the Lord. And when you spend time with God, get to know God, you know him personally. That's the time he will send you. Like the apostles, they were with Jesus for three and a half years. And, and uh, he, he does not send, send the disciples empty-handed, hand, but he send them with authority and power. He empowers them. So a very important pattern here I see. Uh, many people, they serve the Lord because they said, I have these resources. I have this money. I do not know uh, what to do with this money. So I want to serve the Lord. And, you know, just because of that, they have this wealth and resources. Some people, because they have this uh, so-called burden, uh, sometimes they mistaken the burden from calling. Um, uh, calling is different. Burden is different. Uh, maybe we might have burden, but we do not have the calling. All right. But uh, maybe... You, you, you are called of God. That's why he put a burden uh, in your heart uh, to serve the Lord. So uh, a burden comes uh, because of the calling. But some people, they have burden, but they do not, they do not have calling. It's a good intention. It's a good heart uh, to serve the Lord. But calling, <clears throat> calling is very, very important. And I do believe, um, even until today, I do not just... Uh, serve the Lord, even I'm pastoring a church. I, I do not just do it because um, I have this ministry, I have this church, but I'm, until today, I, I still have this desire to, to get to know God even better, uh, uh, even closer. I remember because I was exposed to this um, uh, demonstration and the miracle crusade, you know, I got inspired by Benny Hinn, Reinhard Bonke, Morris Rollo during the time, you know, they are so uh, famous uh, 
uh, and they inspired a lot of people. So I was inspired. Uh, the first book I read is the book, Good Morning, Holy Spirit by Benny Hinn, and that really inspired me and, and it bring me to a new uh, understanding and dimension uh, in knowing the Holy Spirit. Uh, I read that book a few times and uh, really launched me into the ministry, to the ministry. So um, I remember that I want, I want what they have. So I saw people being prayed for and they fall into the ground, you know, and manifestation happened. And I want that. And um, of course, the teaching that I heard that you need to pray a lot, you need to spend time with God. So I did that. I did that. Uh, go seminars, being prayed uh, for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, spend time with God in prayer a lot. And after I did that for quite some time, uh, the demonstration came. Uh, there was a prayer meeting. I was there and exercising because in the prayer meeting, we are free to exercise, um, hearing the voice of God and praying for people. So I just moved by faith and I feel in my heart, God says, stretch your hand on this person. So I stretch it forth. So when I stretch forth and pray for this person, the, the person was thrown back a few feet away. I said, wow, this, this is something. As, you know, I said, wow, I got it, I got it. So that really encouraged me um, in serving the Lord. So in the, in the group, uh, we went, when people call somebody sick in the hospital, you know, in the mental hospital, wherever, there is a, 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 possess, a man possessed, a spiritual attack, wherever we go. And we just enjoy seeing God moving and setting people free and, you know, uh, deliverance happen. People get healed and all of that. I was not in a ministry yet. But uh, after the Bible school, so I decided to really give up everything and serve the Lord full time. So in 1994, after the short-term training school, uh, I ended up back in my hometown. There was a, a charismatic church there. So one of the pastor, uh, he's from Singapore. He's one of the teachers there. I asked for counseling. So he recommended me into the church. So the church took me uh, as a worker there. So I was with them for two years, uh, working with them, teach in the children's church, teach in the Sunday school, uh, teach in the youth service. And they have Bahasa service. They have Filipino service. And also with the worship team. And also uh, it makes me to grow because uh, I have opportunity to serve with a lot of departments. So it, it, you know, it helped me to grow in in uh, serving the Lord. After two years, I came out from there and I moved to another city and worked with another church uh, uh, with the interior mission. So working among uh, pioneering churches with them. So I was with them for six years, working with them and uh, we helped them to pioneer church and to establish the church for six years. So after six years, I resigned and then started our own church in the same city and pastored the church for seven years uh, in the same city, reaching out to the Filipinos and uh, to the Indonesians and to some locals there. So after seven years there, um, I have an offer to move over to this side of West Malaysia. That's why now I'm ended up here in West Malaysia and Ipoh. So after pastoring seven years, my church, so we moved here in 2011, working with a four square church for three years. And um, after working with them for three years, um, I resigned. And um, some, some friends, about 15 of them, they said we want a fellowship. So we started a prayer meeting and we do not know that it became a church today. And this is what uh, the church that we have today. Uh, we call it Ethnos Evangelical uh, Fellowship here. So, and this church now is... Uh, seven years, seven years old here in uh, Ipoh. Uh, it is an English uh, service, uh, but we do have Bahasa, but it's online. Uh, some of the members from East Malaysia still want to connect with me, so we provide for them. So we have this uh, Bahasa service in the Sunday evening. But, um, you know, this Mark chapter 3, verse uh, 13 to... 15 uh, becomes a pattern for me and uh, it becomes a life. And I experienced this calling, uh, being with Jesus, being with the presence of God. 
And because of that, he sent me forth, uh, you know, to serve him. And, uh, and because of that, he sent me with uh, his uh, equipping and empowering. You know, we see God uh, working uh, amazingly uh, in these years of uh, ministry. Not that I started young. Um, now it's almost 24, 25 years in the ministry. And uh, personally, I'm glad that I started young in the ministry because I've learned a lot of things, uh, get exposed to many, many things also in the ministry. And I've learned uh, to understand denominations, to understand different backgrounds and to appreciate other people's uh, background and all. And, you know, so that um, can be able to work even with anybody. You know, um, I still can go and uh, preach with the Catholic people um, the Anglican Church sometimes here invite me to uh, share with them or to lead them into worship. Um, some other churches here also uh, in West Malaysia uh, invited me to share with them. So it's just an amazing journey uh, with Jesus. Uh, I remember Jesus said in John chapter uh, 12, verse 26, he said, He who served me, him will my father honor. And also, I want to encourage us tonight, even though we are living in this difficult time, uh, in this pandemic, we in a ministry, sometimes uh, people look at us, you know, uh, maybe very insignificant because they do not understand. But we have responded to God's call. We embrace his life. We embrace his calling. Uh, I want to encourage you. It is not easy to be in ministry today. Um, many pastors are getting discouraged also. I have some uh, friends, they have to close down their church because of the situation today. Um, I have another friend who called me two weeks ago and we have a long talk in the telephone. He's, he's in the point of giving up, even though he's well supported you know, the, the, the church that is supporting him, support him very well. But he's in the point of discouragement. He wants to give up. So just encourage him. Um, to me, I still, I'm still here today by the grace, it's by the grace of God, by the grace of God. Um, just now before this meeting, I have another meeting, uh, a group from Indonesia asked me to share with them. I was just telling them that uh, my, my, my pay, my salary is, one one year, you know, date back because uh, the church really uh, in a difficult uh, situation. So, uh, I'm living by grace, but you know, I I still you know I, I still can eat well. Uh, God provides for us wonderfully, and He is faithful. He never uh, leave us. He never forsake us. Uh, God is so wonderful. Um, that's why I understand this. That when you serve the Lord, it is an honor. God will honor us. We must have faith. We must hang on to the Lord. Uh, even in the difficult time, you know, we, we see God's supernatural provision. All right. My, my church is still here. We still can be able to pay the rent. Uh, my house, we still can pay <laughs> with all the expenses that we have. We still can cover by the grace of God. So that just make me to love Jesus more and to serve God more in my life. You know, so I just want to encourage everyone. We all face uh, situations in our life. We, every one of us, we have a mountain to face. We have giants to slay, all right? We have trials and testing that we need to go through and to overcome. You know, uh, like, like the other uh, last, uh, I think, the last meeting that we have last last Tuesday, is it? Uh, they were saying about the spiritual attack, you know, witchcraft, the enemy, <clears throat> you know, like uh, beating them and all of that. But, you know, we have won the victory. God has given us total victory. Our victory is sure. We just need to look at Jesus. We need to fix our eyes on Jesus because he is the one that will sustain us. He is the one that will provide for us. He's the one that will carry. I know it's not easy. It is not easy. It doesn't mean that you believe in Jesus. Everything will be prosperous and 
you will have uh, you know overflowing things in your life no of course god's blessing is there but trials and testings are still there we still have to go through some trials are very big some trials like it's very easy to overcome but god is our strength the bible says we are more than conquerors through christ who love us so that is my life journey i have three wonderful children uh, i have a one year old and 10 month baby uh, my daughter is coming 24 years old my son is coming 22 and i have a small uh, little baby uh, and and we are still here uh, serving the lord and just enjoy god in our life and serving him and touching people I'm encouraged because now every meeting that we have has to be online. So I'm in, on Facebook live uh, every Sunday morning here and also Sunday evening for the Bahasa. And even though we cannot gather in church, I'm preaching on uh, Facebook live, but we hear some testimonies and feedback how people were touched and just blessed, so blessed. Uh, I have a longtime friend from Nepal. I never met him for a couple of years. And I don't know how he saw my preaching on the Facebook. Uh, he called me through Messenger, and he got so excited. And uh, he, he just invited me to speak in his uh, uh, group the other day with some Bible school students also. Uh, he was touched. You know, it just encourages me that when we serve the Lord, Jesus said, the Father will honor us. So I want to encourage everyone here. God honors you. God honors your faith. God honors your service to him. God honors you in your ministry. God honors you in whatever you do for him. Hallelujah. I want to give glory to God for that. Thank you so much. And thank you, Pastor Charlie, for this opportunity. Praise God. Back to you, Pastor Charlie. Unmute, Pastor Charlie. Uh, Pastor Carlo, can you just do a short summary for for okay. <laughs> No need yeah. too long. Okay, okay. make a concise okay. point. Can can I? I was having hard time to to do two. No no uh, I know I know I know that's yeah, why yeah. I leave it okay. to you. <laughs> it, it, let you flow then you you do the right. summary. Okay. okay okay I will do. Okay ya saya akan terjemahkan sedikit dalam bahasa uh, untuk yang uh, tidak mengerti bahasa Inggris. Ya, maaf karena saya terus-terus bahasa Inggris tadi susah mau cakap dua bahasa. Um, ya, saya dibesarkan tadi ya di gereja Katolik, tapi saya di Tuhan menjama kehidupan saya sehingga saya tertarik untuk melayani Tuhan dari umur yang muda, umur 16 tahun. Uh, di expose ya hamba-hamba Tuhan yang luar biasa. Jadi karena itu saya sangat terdorong untuk melayani Tuhan dan mengenal Tuhan dalam kehidupan saya. Sehingga saya mau melayani Tuhan dan uh, merasa panggilan Tuhan uh, umur saya seawal 19-20 tahun. Ya, dan uh, setelah 21-22 tahun saya pergi ke sekolah Alkitab, ya, satu training jangka masa yang pendek, uh, short training dan di sana setelah selesai uh, 6 bulan sekolah Alkitab saya pergi melayani di suatu gereja dan dari sana bermula perjalanan pelayanan melayani Tuhan sehingga ke hari ini. Saya melayani di gereja itu, gereja karismatik selama dua tahun, di expose juga belajar banyak cara pelayanan. Setelah dua tahun saya pindah ke suatu kota lagi, melayani di suatu gereja di pedalaman selama enam tahun. Selepas itu, saya uh, merintis gereja sendiri dan uh, menggambalakan gereja saya sendiri selama tujuh tahun ya di Sabah uh, dan setelah itu saya menerima uh, apa ini tawaran untuk menggambalakan gereja di sini di Semenanjung Malaysia ini yang sekarang ini dan saya membantu mereka dalam pelayanan selama tiga tahun uh, dan selepas itu saya keluar uh, merintis gereja yang sekarang ini gereja Ethnos Evangelical Fellowship dan gereja ini sudah tujuh tahun. Jadi pola yang saya lihat di dalam Markus 3 dari ayat 13 sehingga 15 itu sangat jelas terjadi dalam kehidupan saya. Memang panggilan Tuhan itu karena Yesus memanggil 
12 muridnya untuk dia putus ya untuk dipanggilnya. Jadi dia panggil mereka yang pertama untuk bersama dengan dia, bersama-sama dengan dia, untuk dekat dengan Tuhan. Dan sudah mengenal Tuhan, murid-murid Yesus tiga tahun setengah bersama dengan dia, ya mereka bersama dengan dia, Yesus utus mereka. Jadi pertama itu dipanggil untuk bersama dengan dia, ikut Yesus, membangun hubungan yang intim, yang erat dengan Tuhan Yesus Kristus. Setelah itu, Yesus mengutus mereka untuk memberitakan Injil. Dan Yesus mengutus mereka bukan dengan tangan kosong, tapi Yesus mengutus mereka dengan dilengkapi dengan kuasa otoritas sehingga mereka boleh menyembuhkan orang yang sakit dan mengusir setan-setan. Dan perkara ini saya lihat terjadi di dalam perjalanan kehidupan rohani saya dari Tuhan panggil saya sehingga hari ini dan juga saya melihat banyak perkara yang terjadi di dalam pelayanan ini ya kurang lebih sudah 24 25 tahun saya di dalam pelayanan memang saya mula dengan usia yang muda sampai hari ini ya tapi saya puji Tuhan karena kemurahan Tuhan karena berkat Tuhan panggilan Tuhan saya mampu untuk melayani Tuhan sehingga hari ini Walaupun saat ini saat-saat yang susah, saat-saat pandemik, gereja tutup buka, tutup buka, dan sekarang pun masih tutup lagi. Jemaat tidak bisa datang untuk beribadah, ya pemberian persembahan di gereja, dana gereja sudah turun sehingga gaji pun tidak boleh masuk, ya gaji saya ya tertangguh satu tahun ke belakang, ya tapi syukur sama Tuhan karena penyertaan Tuhan luar biasa sehingga hari ini. Tetap kita di sini melayani Tuhan. Karena iman kita percaya sama Tuhan, Tuhan yang menyediakan segala yang kita perlukan. Yang penting hati kita itu mau melayani Tuhan. Karena Yohanes 12 ayat 26 berkata, kalau kita melayani Tuhan, Tuhan itu akan memandang kita atau Tuhan itu dia hormat kita. Hormat kita. Jadi itu dorongan saya tadi dalam bahasa Inggris. Kita yang sudah melayani Tuhan karena kita menyahut panggilan Tuhan. Kita sudah menerima cara kehidupan Tuhan Yesus ini. Melayani Tuhan, menggembalakan gerejanya, menjangkau jiwa, melayani Tuhan di ladang Tuhan. Kita harus terdorong bahwa kita ini dihormati oleh Bapa di surga. Tuhan tidak pernah lupa kita. Tuhan tidak pernah tinggalkan kita walaupun di saat-saat yang susah ini. Karena Tuhan menghormati kita ataupun Tuhan memandang kita karena kita melayani Tuhan Yesus Kristus. Haleluya. Saya harap kita terdorong dengan sedikit kesaksian saya malam ini ya. Tuhan berkati, Tuhan berkati. Amin. Okay, well, I think others also feel that uh, you're really speaking out from your heart, uh, how your present, your even your present situation, and uh, many of us, uh, many of the, the 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 partners here are also going to similar situation. So you're not alone, uh, okay? <laughs> so when you say some encouragement like that, I think it's uh, it is. I like the word uh, earlier, a taco that reminds us that dove. Uh, one of the purpose of Dove is we we are building up the unity of Christ among us in with many people of different culture, different uh, places, different churches, or different ministry, uh, better word, different uh, ministry means group of people, uh, church or group of people, and also different, uh, what they call, we come from different background. We come from even different theological background, uh, doctrinal background. We also... Uh, uh, but here in 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 Delft, we can we have gradually almost uh, one year of Papa, uh, one year uh, plus more, little mm -hmm. bit more, uh, almost exactly. We should have celebrated the anniversary for God. <laughs> we forgot to celebrate the anniversary. That why that why maybe delay the anniversary next meeting. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, I just check the date later. On. And the thing is, the thing is, we 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 uh, want to. Propagate. We want to promote. We want to encourage. The word is uh, Bapa. When we started, Bapa says we need to encourage each other here to be united. Okay. 
So mm. united, so that united what united that uh, you are united in heart, in understanding, in knowing that uh, the understanding is the big word to me. Like understanding people's present situation, the partner's present situation, understanding the difficulties they are going through, understanding the uh, what they call the challenges that they are presently and future, and also to encourage people. You know, sometimes it's so difficult one to give up. Huh? You just mentioned huh? when to give up, you know, it is not easy huh, for people to say, oh, you, you know, it's not easy to, 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 to say don't give up or give up, you know. It, it's a very difficult decision. And uh, we, we, we want to encourage uh, people to, to, to see the, what they call, that their faithfulness, God will not, God is always faithful, you know, whatever it is. Even if it's a temporary, if you ask me what people say, want to give up or not. I say, if you feel so strongly about it, my opinion, other people can expect. If you feel pretty strongly about it, uh, go ahead, lah, because put it as temporary, lah, not necessarily permanent. Lah. You know, sometimes we change plans. We have to change uh, plans according to the situation and the environment and what is happening. Okay. But don't think as a lot of people say, give up means give up ministry completely. No, la. you know, let's take a break. La. Maybe the better word is take a sabbatical. La. You know, they call it. Huh? Take a sabbatical. La. I use the, the new way of de defining sabbatical in COVID is, you know, stop first. La. You know, that's a good way to sabbatical. La. Why not? Anyway, some people have been serving a lot of years. They need a break. Break. La. Huh? You know, I think that's more like encouraging those kind of uh, thoughts and thinking and direction. Okay, so thank you for, for, for being so open. We understand your situation. Okay, I pass on to the rest. Hello, hello. Oh, hello. Uh. Sapa, hello. <laughs> okay, pass on the rest. Uh, comments, uh, comments or questions, or you want to know a little bit more about uh, Carlo and family and ministry? Yeah, uh, shalom, Master Carlo. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Once again, I I remember when I heard about um, you said you are listening to Rinhan Bonke and uh, mm. all those uh, missionary, <clears throat> right? So for myself, after I received Christ in 1997, mm. I told God I want to to be like Billy Graham. I said, send me to the world. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> That's why I laugh or oh, yeah, smile <laughs> because I reminded me that I wanted to be like really Graham used me like him. And I was like, mm. <laughs> 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 and it truly, you know, use me, you know, bring us to the world. So truly, truly, that desire. Uh, God always, you know, he, he will honor us because he wants to us get to do something. To use the yeah so a god is god is really good and i'm so encouraging and 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 you have 